Stephen King is known for being one of the best horror and fantasy writers of all time, most of which spawned successful and unsuccessful film adaptations since the 70s. But let's just pretend I was born around the time The Shining came out. If you told me that there was going to be a Shining sequel that followed Dan Torrance about 39 years later, and that it was actually going to be good, I still probably would have split my head open at the thought of a sequel tarnishing the legacy of a classic. But the results don't lie. Dr. Sleep is an impressive film, dare I say, a worthy successor to the classic 80s film. Dan Torrance, traumatized from his father's attempts to kill him during his possession by the Overlook Hotel, went from a tricycle riding moped to an alcoholic telepathic. His efforts to fully do good for himself in medical work doesn't keep him hidden for long, for his telepathy, his ability to shine, brings him into contact with a murderous cult and a young girl whose shining powers is unlike anything both had ever seen. Reluctant, but determined to put a stop to this and do good by himself, Dan and Abra join forces to vanquish this cult and embrace their ability to shine the brightest. Sounds pretty straightforward, and uh, needless to say, I was actually kind of surprised that it sort of was like that. It felt more or less like a superhero-like story in the realms of Unbreakable or Glass, right up until the pacing, the tone, and the editing reminded me exactly what I was watching here. All throughout this movie, the tone is visibly and aesthetically dark, just not too edgy. Whenever the film needed to hit you with a snippet or segment of unsettling imagery, it lets you have it. They always strike a note of mesmerizing creepiness the more you see it and the more you feel it. Pacing-wise, it's a rather methodical slow burn, which, again, adds more layers to the film's brilliant use of rising up to the inevitable climax. And the editing is almost impeccable, to be honest. Aside from being easy to dissect what exactly is happening and also make you look onwards in a wondrous sense of awe or even shock or even uncomfortableness. It sort of engulfs you further into the film as this sense of uneasiness just crawls up and down your spine. This is psychological horror at its finest, and it's those elements that are the very reason why I love psychological horror in the first place. It's well executed here, it's very visceral, and compared to its predecessor's claustrophobic setting, it provides a sense of uneasiness, you know? It both shows and tells us how well it understands that horror has often le been less about scares and more about providing its viewers with a pleasurable imaginative rush of power and control, as well as a psychological sucker front towards its real-life traumas and its situations that one can find physically or mentally terrifying or challenging, and both the characters and the acting in this movie movie nailed that kind of terror. Both Ewan McGregor and Rebecca Ferguson are wickedly talented in their respective roles, one nailing the reluctant hero and the other owning the understandable but equally dangerous villain. Seriously, it's nice to have Rebecca Ferguson in an antagonistic role where she isn't underutilized or just complete fodder. The main star, however, is yet another newcomer, Kylie Curran. Bold, brave, confident, stunning, mesmerizing, heartbreaking, whatever kaleidoscopic emotional layers or beats her character needs to have, she sells it extremely well, and I truly related and felt for her. Not to mention, Mike Flanagan's directing here is highly impressive. Not only is he very immaculate with his style, blending in both childhood trauma and supernatural effects so seamlessly with one another, and never faltering or letting up with a dark setting with each passing scene, but the way he goes out and explains his use of visceral communication of what The Shining is, how it works, and what it means only adds more to both the film's level of tension as well as its unbridled ability factor, helping the film curve its own path as well as keep us on our toes dreading the anticipating whatever accident would happen next. But I think it's safe to say that even after all of this, it's uncertain that if this second act was really needed at all. To be fair, a good check of the complaints this movie have circle back to either trying it to tie itself into the events of the Shining film or having to exist in the first place, and I will admit the dialogue can be a little cheesy at times, but that's up to whoever watches this with a different set of eyes. Now, me personally, we may not have needed this, but considering that this was only the third Stephen King adaptation we got last year, let alone the only one that I liked overall, I think it makes just enough of an impact to justify its own existence. Say what you will about Doctor Sleep bombing at the box office, but one thing's for sure, it definitely left a lot of impact on us when it needed to. Who knows? Maybe the world will shine again.